So you're telling me that this ring can track your sleep, your heart rate, and even see changes in your body temperature? Well, I actually found out that it does. And in this video, I wanna share with you guys why the Aura Ring Gen 3 has started to become one of my favorite fitness trackers, but there is one flaw that I will get to later on in the video, so make sure that you stay tuned for that. And the first thing that I love about the Aura Ring is the fact that it's just such a sleek design. Like, it's not as big and distracting as your traditional fitness tracker. In fact, it's pretty low profile. You can barely even feel it on your finger. And what's really cool is they give you a ring sizing kit to make sure that the ring that you're getting really fits the finger that you plan to use the ring on. I ended up getting the black version in size 11 because I wanted to put it on my forefinger. Now the Aura Ring itself is around four to six grams, which is basically the weight of a nickel. It is a lightweight titanium material, which is also water resistant up to 100 meters. Now what I really love about the Aura Ring is also its battery life. It lasts around four to seven days, which is around two days longer than my Whoop. And it definitely trumps my Apple Watch, which basically I have to charge every single night. Apple, need you to fix that. Give me at least more than one day and I've definitely put it through its paces. I've worn this almost every single day since I've gotten it, but I'll admit I don't abuse it. For example, I don't bring the ring with me in the shower. It's just my personal preference. I don't really like wearing any electronics while I'm showering, and I do tend to take it off when I go to the gym when I have a heavy weightlifting upper body workout. That's mainly because I'm just a little bit afraid of marring it up because I did pay $400 for this thing, but I'm pretty sure it's durable enough to handle it. So ultimately, it is a device that is long lasting, durable, and versatile. Now, the main reason why I bought the Aura Ring in the first place was because I wanted to get good sleep and recovery tracking. In fact, Aura even said that they have the most accurate consumer sleep tracker out there. And this is mainly due to their sensors that are in the device, such as their infrared, red, and green LEDs, which are used to track your heart rate 24 seven, and also an additional sensor that helps to track your skin temperature throughout the day. Now, when it comes to sleep in the app, it shows your standard sleep metrics, such as your total sleep, your time in bed, your resting heart rate, but it also dives a little bit deeper into like your sleep stages, how restful your sleep was, and if you had maybe any type of disruptions or distractions. But what I really appreciate the most about Aura is the fact that they don't just give you data, they actually give you insights that you can act on as well. For example, to start off, they give you a sleep score out of 100 to let you know how you slept the night before. And under that, they'll give you a few insights of how that was. Also, when you dive a little bit deeper into to the sleep section, you can actually see areas that have been optimal and areas where you need to pay attention. The timing is definitely the one that I need to work on the most. I've definitely been going to bed late recently and I need to improve it. And then after a few nights of tracking your sleep, the Aura app will start giving you personalized recommendations for when you need to start winding down to get ready to go to bed based off of your previously good sleep scores. Now, what I've grown to love even more than sleep tracking is their recovery tracking or what they call readiness. So similar to a sleep score, they give you a readiness score, which is basically out of 100, which lets you know how ready you are to take on the day based off of your activity, your stress, as well as your sleep from the day before. So this is very similar to the Fitbit Charge 5 that I made a video about a couple weeks ago. And these sensors, are super powerful. I will never forget in December of 2021 when I had COVID, my aura ring basically showed that my temperature jumped by four degrees. That blew my mind because I couldn't believe that it would actually be able to track something like that. They're also releasing new features such as the workout heart rate tracking as well as the blood oxygen measuring. And they also have fairly accurate automatic nap and activity detection, which is super cool, especially if you happen to doze off or maybe you walk to the grocery store, it will log it in the app automatically. It tracks your heart rate 24 seven so you can see big spikes throughout the day, but also times where your body's in a more restorative state. I also saw that they had a feature for period prediction as well as cycle tracking, and they have a ton more features such as like guided meditations and audio sessions, which I haven't even tried out yet, but overall just a great experience. But there is one flaw and that is their pricing. They received a ton of backlash in the fall and winter of 2021 because they went to a subscription-based model. With the Aura Ring Gen 2, you just had to buy the ring and then you got all the fitness tracking stats for free. With the Aura Ring Gen 3, you actually have to buy the ring for three to 400 bucks. And then after a six month free trial, then you have to start paying six bucks a month to get access to all of your activity tracking and deeper insights. Basically, without that membership, you really don't get anything. You get the readiness score, the sleep score, and your activity goals, but that's it. No insights, nothing. It's kind of like Aura's telling you that you need to pay for your own health data. Bruh. However, you really can't be that surprised because a ton of companies are moving to a subscription-based model. In fact, Fitbit, their wearables run between 130 to 300, and their subscription is around 10 bucks a month to get access to their extra features. The Whoop membership, you get a free tracker, but it's $30 a month. Amazon Halo is four bucks a month, but the Apple Watch and Garmin are free, which I do believe Apple Watch is going to be going to a subscription model in some shape or form 
in the future for the Fitness Plus offerings. And when you do do the math, it's around $336 to $436 for the year, which equates to around 28 bucks a month. So with all that said, do I recommend buying the Aura Ring Gen 3? In my opinion, yes. I recommend this device to a ton of people, especially if they're trying to get into just tracking their sleep and their health. It's super sleek, it's low profile, and honestly, it's just something that I think is super useful. Yes, there's that $6 subscription after the first six months, but honestly, like you pay more than that for a coffee every single day. I get from a principal standpoint, it can be a little bit annoying, but I honestly think having all that information at your fingertips is just so valuable. Totally get it if that's not for you. If you're looking for maybe something that's more of a fitness tracker that gives you a little bit more data and insights, make sure you check out my Fitbit Charge video here, or if you're looking for a dope fitness app that you can use to work out and be a lot healthier, check out this video here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you compile that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and you already know, embrace the hype. Woo!